here at Gillette Stadium, the Titans prepare to fight the Patriots and history. The first round of the playoffs, one game, one play at a time. It starts today. Tannehill under pressure, fires to the end zone. Touchdown, tight Ferkser. Hey, Ferk go crazy. Henry, touchdown, Titans. Yeah. Pass batted up in the air, intercepted, and returned for a touchdown, Titans. Logan Ryan. Everybody count us out. It didn't matter, though. Man, it feels good to get this done, man. Nobody beats the Patriots in Foxborough. But we did. You came to Foxborough and tighten up on that thing. Hey, told y'all all we need is one shot. Going to the second round, baby. Let's go, baby. I had to do a Titans roll, man. We're the hot team right now. On to Baltimore. On to Baltimore, indeed. Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show. My name is Mike Keith. John Robinson sitting in again this week for the head coach. As the Titans play once again Saturday night, 7.15 kickoff time in Baltimore at m and &M Bank Stadium. We're on Titans Radio at 6 o'clock with Titans Countdown. What a win in Foxborough. What else can we say about it? And, John, when you took this job nearly four years ago to the day, you knew that if you're going to come out of the AFC, you've got to be able to go into New England and beat the Patriots. Goal accomplished and a very special night for the entire organization. Yeah, just a great effort by, you know, really, like you said, everybody in the organization specifically, uh, the coaches and players did a great jam, uh, job putting the game plan together. The coaches did, worked hard at it all week. We built built momentum through through the week of practice, and then went and executed on 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 Saturday night. And just so proud of the way the team played. Let's take a look at the six pack from the win Saturday night in New England. Titans trail in the ball game early, three to nothing, as the Patriots went and scored on their first possession. But again, important that Tennessee gets an answer. Third and ten from the twelve. Yeah, really great recognition by, by Ryan here. They send a seven-man pressure, and it's basically man coverage. Um, Ferkshire does a great job kind of spraying his release, giving himself some, some ability to break inside, and, and a great throw and catch, great execution overall by the offense. Tannehill gets just enough time. Ferkshire makes the grab, and the Titans take a 7-3 to three lead. That's the score at the end of one. As we move to late in the second quarter, the Titans trail 13-7. to seven. They get the football back after a Patriots field goal and go run with Derrick Henry. Back to the ground game. Um, you know, just a really well-executed uh, play here. Great individual effort by, by Derrick uh, to get through there. But you can see Jones, he gets enough on Hightower to kind of make him jump, slows him down. On the front side of the play, Michael Pruitt does a really good job getting movement on the outside linebacker. Great combination by Conklin and Davis. And then it's really Derek on, on a corner, and you see him kind of jump through and pull through a tackle there. And it's the, then it's one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Duran finally gets him out, um, but it's a huge gain for us offensively. It's a gain of 29 on the play. Takes us to the two-minute warning. So staying with the same drive, 47 seconds left in the half. Titans have gone five straight Derek Henry runs, and then there's a bit of a surprise in the pass game. Yeah, a little, little kind of mis, you know, misdirection here off the, it's a boot screen. Um, Johnu Smith does a great job uh, on the backside of, of kind of running an over route, holds the safety, and, and great action by, by Ryan. He gives the lineman uh, time to get over there, kind of set up the wall, and just a great individual effort. He knows, Derek knows he's going to take a shot there at the pylon, does a great job securing the ball. Lineman do a great job getting a hat on a hat, and, and we finish it off getting it inside the one there. Officials discuss it for just a moment. Think for a second he might have gotten the ball over the pylon. Instead, Henry ruled out of bounds at the one-yard line. 38 seconds remaining in the half. First and goal. Who else are you going to give it to? Big 22. Yeah, just old school football here. Just, you know, a hat on a hat. Come off. Get on your guy. Uh, knock him off the ball. Get knocked back. Don't let any penetration come through uh, the line of scrimmage. Get Derek behind his pads. Get him downhill and then surge in, into the line of scrimmage. Great, you know, great execution on that drive right before half. To get a score right before halftime and go in with some momentum uh, was, was really huge for us. I guess Henry was technically the fullback on that play because you motioned A.J. Brown into the tailback position. Yeah, just another little bit of a, you know, a wrinkle to kind of get the guys looking. Maybe they're you know, expecting um, some type of, you know, I don't know, pitch play or, or another screen play. Um, but all the while, we're going to give it to Derek. It's 14-13 to 13 at halftime. It's hard to believe 
that 29 minutes and 35 seconds later, it's still 14 to 13. 25 seconds to go in the game. The Titans bring in the punter, Brett Kern, and he and the special teams come through big time. Huge play for us. Just great situational football. Um, they actually put Edelman back in the back to return and then and then walked him over to cover one of our gunners. Uh, they rushed nine guys. You know, a couple of the guys on the interior there had to block two guys. They did a great job holding it off. Brett did a good job. He knew he was going to have to one-step kick that thing. And then great awareness by Dane, you know, to get his back to the goal line there and stop the ball at the one-yard line and just really pin those guys. A critical, critical situation uh, for us that was executed extremely well. Something that the Patriots do very well is play situational football. The Titans do it to help beat the Patriots in that instance. Dose of their own medicine. Dose of their own medicine. And to end it, Tom Brady's final pass of the 2019 season ends up with a Titan. Yeah, there's not, there's not a whole lot of time here. This was going to be a hook and ladder play. Uh, they were trying to throw it to the curl route there and then, and then leak uh, James White around for the pitch. Uh, Brock does a good job of choking down on, on Sanu there, getting a hand on the ball. It pops up, and then Logan redeems himself for the one that he knows he missed earlier in the game and to come away and, and, and pick the ball off, walk in, walk in touchdown to really seal the win for us. Special moment for him, uh, you know, being a former Patriot as well. Just a really... Uh, well, another well-executed play situation. You could see Woodyard, he's on the back. We knew that that was coming. So um, really, you know, just really well-executed defensive play. Shut him out in the second half. Shut out Tom Brady at home in the playoffs in the second half. We knew that's what it was going to take. It was going to take, you know, really sound defense. We we're going to have to stand up to them offensively, uh, to their offense. And then offensively, we we're going to have to run the football. And we were able to execute both of those keys and come away with a win. Speaking of sound defense, we're going to see some in our Bridgestone Clutch Performance Plays of the game. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. The Bridgestone Clutch Performance Plays of the game, late second quarter, Patriots first and goal at the Titans one, and they don't get in. Yeah, just really a huge set of plays here uh, for us down there on the goal line. They're, they're really trying to punch it in. Um, our defensive line, they do a really good job of, of knocking back the line of scrimmage, playing down the line of scrimmage, getting in on plays. And, and by their play, it really helped Rashawn um, to come up with some huge stops for us there, created cre creases in, in their blocking scheme, and he ran through and splattered, and splattered the back. Um, just a great team performance. Um, from the secondary, from the line of scrimmage guys, and certainly from Rashawn on that on that set of plays. The Patriots end up having to kick a 21-yard field goal. Instead of going up 17 to seven, they go up only 13 to seven. The Titans drive back down the field and take the lead at the half. It ends up being the key sequence in the ball game. It really was. It kept four points off the board. Uh, it allowed us to to get the lead back. Um, before halftime and then really keep the lead for the rest of the game. Are you ready for the Delta Dental Guess the Titan? We'll see. I hope I can keep my track record um, intact here. John Robinson, two of two on the year, filling in for Mike Vrabel. Can you guess this Titan? Delta Holy Dental's Guess mackerel. the Titan. That is a tough one. That's a tough one. <clears throat> I'm going to go out on a limb and say Khalif Raymond. Khalif Raymond is the guess. Show us Khalif Raymond. Ooh, Kenny Vaccaro. I guess they went with Kenny Vaccaro because he had such a good game. The other he had night. a great game. I mean, he was aggressive. He was downhill. Um, he had a great um, pass breakup on the sideline there where he really got over the top and, and, and made a great play. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get, that uh, I didn't get that. You're two for three. I'm two for three. You're two for three. <laughs> Kenny Vaccaro playing good ball. Another guy playing good ball in the secondary, Logan Ryan. He's going to join us for the Geico Gladiator of the game. Amy Wells with number 26 when we return on the Mike Vrabel Show. Brady in the end zone, takes the snap, looks, fires, pass, batted up in the air, intercepted, and returned for a touchdown.
Touchdown Titans, Logan Ryan! Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. I'm Amy Wells, joined by Logan Ryan, who is our Geico gladiator of the game. Now, Logan, I've got to ask you, because we're in the playoffs now. This is serious. Does the 24-hour rule still apply, or does the window of celebration get a little smaller as the intensity picks up? That's a good question. I think we definitely enjoyed that one. It was a big win for Nashville. I saw the reaction videos. It's great. I can feel the, the buzz in the city. But, you know, the 24 hours has passed, so we're on to Baltimore, which will be a great test for us. You're the guy in the locker room with the most playoff experience. How do you take your experience and help out some of the guys around you on this team? Tell these guys to be themselves because the playoffs is just, it's still football. It's still, you still got to do what you do. You got to bring your strengths to the table and to do everything you can for the team. And I feel like when you're a team that started off two and four, every game we won was needed to, to, to get there. So even though we didn't view them as playoff games at the time, every single win, we had to scratch and claw our way to get in. So every win mattered and we got to keep doing the same thing, scratching and clawing to get these wins. It's got to be a little bit harder though to manage your emotions and really stay focused on the task when the stage is so much bigger. I think that's where the experience comes in is be able to kind of silence everyone around you and your family is excited and man my phone blew up after that last game like it never has before but you got to still focus it back in and do what got you there and stick to your routine it's good to feel good i'm happy about our team i love how we're playing i love this group of guys i love the attention that we're getting but it's because we're winning and we got to continue to do the things that that help us win there are a bunch of young guys on the defensive side of the ball especially who have really stepped up this season guys like jeffrey simmons amani hooker david long have gotten a lot of playing time even though they're in their rookie seasons what do you as a leader on that side of the ball do to help them be so productive? Encourage them and make the most of their opportunity. I mean, when you play on really good defenses, it's a, it, it's, it's a pride thing when you get a chance to play. And we have a lot of depth on our defense, and you need to have a lot of depth to make a championship run because injuries happen, the violence of the game, the physicality, people are running the ball a lot more, and you're fighting for every inch out there. And you throw your body on the line, and people get banged up. So if a guy like Jayon has to come out of play, David Long go in there, and the defense can't drop for one snap, not when you're playing against Tom Brady, not when you're playing against Lamar Jackson. How much are you guys on the defensive side of the ball going to be able to lean on Dean Pease, who spent eight years with the Baltimore Ravens? I mean, a ton. I mean, he spent time with the Patriots as well. So we lean on Dean for everything. He's our guru. We're a team that runs different defenses every week based on who we're playing. So we trust the old, old Dean to go scheme it up for us and put us in position to make plays. And uh, we're going to go out there and do whatever he asks. Edward Nathan George Jr., Heisman Trophy winner at Ohio State, first round pick, four Pro Bowls, seven 1,000 yard seasons in eight years, never missed a game, Titans all time leading rusher, workhorse of all workhorses in a great era. That is a Hall of Fame resume. But more than numbers or honors or labels, Edward Nathan George Jr. liked to run, even when no one else did. On December 17, 2000, back in Ohio where he made his name, in the snow and ice of Cleveland, with the cold wind whipping off Lake Erie, run he did, 34 times in all, for 176 yards and three touchdowns. He had teammates, yes, but Eddie George was a one-man wrecking crew as the opponent wilted against his continuous and enthusiastic assault. He loved to run even when no one else did. Edward Nathan George Jr., a name befitting a star, one of the greatest stars of his generation in the National Football League. When the Baltimore Ravens played in Nashville in October of 2018, Joe Flacco was the quarterback and their offense was as traditional as any in the NFL. That started to change late last season when Lamar Jackson took over as the Ravens quarterback and led the team to six wins in their final seven games and the AFC North title. Head coach John Harbaugh had something and he knew it, so he promoted Greg Roman to be Baltimore's offensive coordinator and set out to put together the league's most diverse attack, and they have. After a two and two start, the Ravens have won 12 in a row, putting up amazing offensive numbers. 33 points per game, 206 rushing yards per game, 408 total yards per game. Baltimore starts their attack with Lamar Jackson's amazing ability 
to run the football. We see it in doses, but but not as consistently as, as they'll run the quarterback. And so when you run the quarterback, you know, everybody has to defend and, and there's an extra gap in there. There's an extra guy carrying a football. So you don't have to block them all. You can you can read one of them. You know, they'll read the, the four technique. They'll read the five technique. They'll read the the end or the outside linebacker. It just is a, is a, is a challenge to, to make sure that when you're playing option football, that based on what your call is, that everybody has responsibilities. And when somebody leaves that responsibility, uh, that's where you give up big plays. But Lamar Jackson doesn't just make big plays in the run game. Yes, he's rushed for over 1,200 yards, but Jackson has also thrown 36 touchdown passes. You know, he's athletic enough to, to buy time uh, when he has to, to, to move around. Throws the ball from different arm angles. So it's been impressive just in the few games that I've watched today. Um, you know, because you, you kind of hear about what he's doing, but you've never really, you know, watched it. You've watched it a little bit just in the crossover games. Uh, but then to be able to sit there and watch him you know, just improvise and make plays when there's guys there, not sure that that's how they drew up the play, but. Uh, that's what this league's about, is guys going out there making plays, and uh, he's a special player. Lamar Jackson is a special player who will be named the league's most valuable player in about a month. But he's not the only talented Baltimore Raven. As a matter of fact, the Ravens have 11 other players outside of Jackson who've been named to the Pro Bowl, and that's a record. Running back Mark Ingram has two things in common with Lamar Jackson. Both are Heisman Trophy winners, and both rushed for over 1,000 yards this season. Cornerbacks Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey are two of the best at their position in the NFL. And Justin Tucker has missed just three of 88 total kicks in 2019. The 2019 Baltimore Ravens are talented, versatile, and complete. That's why they didn't lose in the final three months of the regular season. Of course, it's not the regular season anymore. We'll get the keys to the Titans having a chance to knock off the Ravens in the divisional round when the Mike Vrabel Show continues right after this. AFC Divisional Playoff Game Saturday night at Baltimore. It's time for the keys to success. John Robinson, let's begin with time of possession you think that is key number one to beat the Ravens yeah it's I mean it's about controlling the football you know we've got to do a really good job offensively uh, a of taking care of the football um, B convert converting third downs getting down to the red zone and, and scoring points uh, because Baltimore they're number one in the league in time of possession and they're number one in scoring so the longer we can keep the ball uh, offensively that means their offense is on the sidelines well also I mean they rush for 206 yards a game this year. They've got their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, with over a thousand. Mark Ingram, the running back, with over a thousand. Gus Edwards, the big back, with over 700. I mean, they can do it on the ground, so you've got to be able to keep it away from them. That's exactly right. All right, so then let's look at the red zone. Here's an area where the Titans have done a great job this year scoring touchdowns. Don't leave four points out there, finish the drive. And those points are, are critical. We saw, you know, we saw that. Um, uh, conversely, last week with New England where we forced a field goal down there and those fourth points ended up costing them there at the end of the game. We've got to continue. We've been successful down in the red zone. We've got to drive the link. We've got to get into the red zone and we've got to get touchdowns. All right, so then the third key to success in this ball game is force Baltimore's offense to go the long, hard way. Don't give them the big plays. And, they've, and they, they're capable of, of making them with this quarterback, whether with, it's with his legs, whether it's handing it to Ingram, who's an explosive back, Hollywood Brown at receiver. I mean, he is super fast. Um, he, Lamar is able to extend plays uh, with his feet. He's able to get out of trouble, move around. Those receivers, the tight ends, are, 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 that's a really good position group for that, for that football team. Um, we can't allow them to have any explosive plays. Touch on the tight ends for just a second, if you would, because they have three guys who can make a lot of things happen. I don't know if any team in the league has three guys like th like the Ravens do at tight end. Yeah, they've got three outstanding players at that position group. Nick Boyle is kind of their on the line of scrimmage blocker, but he catches the ball. He's really strong. He's really powerful. He's got strong hands that he gets into you and, and can move you off the ball if you don't play with good technique. Uh, Andrews. He was kind of a split out receiver in, at, at Oklahoma, really athletic guy, tall, big target, um, big catch radius. Um, and, then, and then Hayden Hurst out of South Carolina, 
um, is another really athletic player, former baseball player um, who can move around. He's got soft hands. He's really instinctive and savvy with uh, finding voids in the zone uh, coverage. Uh, so it's a, it's a huge challenge for us defensively. But the Titans will take confidence, certainly, into Baltimore, especially after the win at New England. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can, you know, like we've said it, you know, all last week, just, just getting a spot in, in the tournament. Um, and then we've just got as good an opportunity as, as every other team. You know, we just got to go up there um, and, and play our style of football. There's a lot of belief in the football team, uh, our football team, with the, the players and the coaches. Um, we believe that we belong, you know, in the playoffs. Uh, we just got to go up there and execute and play sound football. Well, they certainly did a great job last week. It was exciting to see. Looking forward to seeing it again, hopefully. This Absolutely. Week. That's the plan, Mike. All right. So Tennessee at Baltimore. Remember, the game is Saturday night. The kickoff time is 7.15. We're on the air with Titans countdown at 6 o'clock. So again, Saturday, 7.15 kickoff. Airtime on Titans radio is 6 o'clock. For John Robinson sitting in for Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.